Hello, hello and welcome. I hope you're fine. I'm fine, grateful for another day. It's another great day. It's a beautiful day. We thank God for this day. My name is Winnie Kamuya, CEO International Renaissance Center and international best-selling author, a speaker and a coach. Welcome to today. I was sitting in my office when the call came in and I was asked by my staff, please, there are some people who would like to talk to you and they only want to talk to you. I asked, talk to me about what? Because you can handle most of the things. I don't see why I need to talk to anyone. And as I inquired, I knew one thing, they were fully capable of handling the inquiries that were at hand. So, unless this guest was there to see me personally, then I don't know what it was about if it was not about work. And because I didn't know that, so I said, what is it about? He said, no, they only insist that they want to discuss with you. I said to myself, okay, fine. Let me come, let me have a seat with them and let me talk to them. So as I joined my guest, and my guest had been following me for some time. For me, because I'd actually lost an interest, I had forgotten about what I had been doing. It was in 2007, around um, mid-2006, no, it was four years later, at that time, I had stopped doing a teleconference, a teleconference on leaders, lessons in leadership. In 2002, that's when I ran the lessons in leadership teleconference. It was a new concept. It was something very new and it ran from the US. I was in a foreign land and the concept was so new that even when I want to talk to them, they did not understand what I was saying. Why? Because they could not understand how they could be listening or watching on a screen as some great wild leaders were talking to them, sharing some leadership lessons. Had done this for two years. And I remember as I started doing these teleconferences in 2000, 2002, most of the people, in fact, one of the senior government officials who was my guest speaker, who was there to motivate most of the people, say, Winnie, this I don't understand, like, how do you have guests on the wall? Because it's like you're watching the wall. I said, well, it's good for you to come and see so that you can believe what I'm saying because you're going to learn and you're going to learn from the great in the world. And he said, fine, I'll come. And he welcomed people before the session started. So when the session ended, he said, this is really great. I need to bring more people and especially the government employees to learn because they need to be empowered because we expect them to be better leaders. So I thought to myself, okay, we've worked out on something and they truly understand the need of lessons in leadership. And especially when it's learning from the great successful leaders of the world. Let me bring perspective to this. So after two years of running this teleconference, I found that I wasn't making a lot of headway because a lot of people were still in the remote side of seeing things and they could not see their future. So they could not understand the concept. They were still held back by the belief that to be in class, you've got to be in class with your teacher, old school, okay? So they wanted to be in class and with the teacher. They could not see how this teacher could teach them from a distance, but that's where we were heading. So four years later, I abandoned the mission 
and I said, now forget about this thing. Nobody seems to understand what I'm trying to do or nobody knows where we are going. So I am in this ship by myself. Let me forget about it. So my guests were in my office four years later after we had stopped running the teleconferences. They were there to see me, to request me, to bring it back because they needed it at that time. They were doing their masters for business administration and they were required to have leadership skills. How do you help somebody like that? You've already closed the door. The bus has left. The bus is almost arrived its destination and somebody is trying to tell you, I want to get it. Just imagine. The pilot has taken off from land, gone all miles and miles, attitudes and altitudes, and they are almost landing at the destination and suddenly somebody at the departure is asking, can I get in? Get in where? The, the flight left. The bus gone. They have arrived, the people who left with it. Let me bring, let me fast forward so that I can bring perspective again to you. Coronavirus is here. We are forced to be at home. We are forced to work from home. And I want you to think about this. And my question today was shame or guilt? What role are you playing in the ecosystem to help the planet during this crisis? Are you feeling guilty? Are you feeling shame? Are you feeling helpless? Maybe that's what I should have also asked. The doctors and the medical staff are doing the best they can to ensure that they preserve and help us through this period. My question though, where do you fit in in healing and in leading during this crisis? Because you cannot sit back and say, I've got no role. I'm just sitting, waiting for the medics to help me. And when you think about the medics at work, I want you to place yourself and where you are always have been because that's where your role is, that's where you fit in the ecosystem. I want to remind you, you can no longer sit and wait. You have to start doing something in preparation. And I say in preparation because what is going to happen next is going to affect you if you are not careful with what you are doing right now. Because as we wait for this to get sorted out, and it will be sorted out, we know that things might never fall back to the same place where they were. And that might force you to have certain skills to be able to help you to retain your work or to remain relevant. And that is why you need to know where you fit in in the ecosystem and how you are helping to ensure that we are healing the planet, we are healing the world. So if you doubted yourself for one minute that you don't fit in anywhere in helping and that you're not in the front line, I'm sorry, you are in the front line. It doesn't matter where you play your role, but you are in the front line and you're supposed to be up in arms and ensuring things work. So if the business, business has to come back at some point, they will need it to revive the economy. So you're still in the front line. You're saying, no, I can't be. Can I ask you a question? Who is delivering food? Is it a medic? Who is taking you from one place to another if you've got no transport? Who is helping you with whatever you have to do at this point? So you see, we are all in the front line and we have to do something. We have to do what we do so that we can enable the planet to heal. You can sit, you can 
feel sorry and I'm sorry to inform you right now you are in the front line and you need to you need to take action you need to take action stop asking me which action you know better maybe the three questions I needed to ask you is this I need to ask you where are you right now because maybe by understanding where you are right now it could help you to know my next question where do you plan to be when this coronavirus or when they say isolation quarantine is over where do you want to be and if you know and can answer the question of where you want to be my next question is have you planned have you prepared yourself if you haven't planned and if you haven't prepared how will you get to that destination my last question is to ask you to prepare to look for what it is that you require to do or to have if it's skills to have so that you get to that destination to ensure that you are helping in your part where you play because you still play a part you still play a part and you're still in the front line you're not a medic yes i agree i'm not also but you're still playing a part because without you we would not maybe be moving forward or the people you support might not be moving forward so i want to challenge you to stop feeling guilty to stop playing victim and to stop feeling ashamed and to stop feeling there's nothing you can do there is something you can do because we are all of us in the front line all of us in our different capacities we are being prepared and in those capacities we have to play our role so that we can enable the people around us to get to that point where they feel I'm prepared for this time. And I thank God for this person and for that person for helping me to get where I was supposed to get. So no more excuses that I don't know where I'm supposed to be or I don't know whether I'm playing any role or I'm not a doctor. No. You don't need to be a doctor. You need to be who you are where you are because that is your front line that is where you are playing your role so let us ensure that as time is passing we are preparing ourselves for the next era which is almost visible and that we are ready we are not found like my guest four years later they want us to go back and I am telling you, the bus has left and it can't go back. It's already left, it's already arrived where it was supposed to arrive. I want you to be arriving with everyone else. So think about that and start working on those skills that you need to have to ensure that you remain in the front line where you are placed or where you are planted in quotes. And I am sure the people who need your service, who need you, will be grateful that you were in the front line. No more excuse, play your role. Remain in the front line. And be grateful for the opportunity. Because not everyone has that opportunity. I guess now it's time for you to think. It's self-disruption. And right now, there is no excuse. There is nothing you can fall on and start saying, I don't know where I fall or I am not a medic. You now know you are not a medic, but you are in the front line and that you have a role to play. I believe in you and I trust that you being in the front line, we are safe in the new era. And I want to thank you and to live 
knowing that and trusting that if God knows you in the front line, he will give you the grace, the resources, the skills, and whatever else you need to remain in the front line. I trust you and I know you will make a difference. Thank you. And for now, if you have comments and feedback, please feel free to leave them below. And have a pleasant, blessed time. And may God lead you as you remain in the front line. Goodbye for now.